This is the Royal Enfield Interceptor 650. And this is the Kawasaki W800. I'm John. I'm Steve. And we're going to play Top Trumps. This video has been sponsored by SP Connect, the mounting hardware to safely fit your smartphone to your motorbike, your push bike, your car, pretty much anything. So Steve, before we get into any top trumps, you can't top trump styling. So let's just talk about, you can't. You can't say this looks better than that because it's no, so it's, subjective. It, it, is, it is really subjective, yeah, agreed. They're, they're both based on classic bikes. Personally, I don't like that headlight on that W800. Yeah, yeah. So we've we've hit trouble already because <laughs> I really like it. I, I think the, the combination of the LED headlight with the old 60s styling, I think just gives it that nice little little yeah. tweak. Whereas I think the I think even a clear headlight lens with the reflectors built into the backing might have looked better on the Enfield. Yeah. It really is. I get it. It's it's the old 60s Lucas style headlight and and I get that that's what they're harking back to, but it for me, it just looks a little bit dated. There is more to it as well. I mean, we won't get into price yet, but you know, that's going to have been a damn sight cheaper oh, absolutely. than that. Yeah. I do like that engine. I, I like the engine on this, but the look of that engine. Oh, absolutely. That bevel, yes. dri um, bevel driven cam. Yeah, it, it just, you know, we've, we've kind of hummed and hard about this all day as we've been stopping and, and riding. There's just little, little tweaks on this, little chromed areas that I think. And all, all credit to the Kawasaki, it, it, you picked it up two days ago and it had done yeah. seven, ten miles. Ten miles. <laughs> okay. The, the Enfield, I think, has been a press bike for a um, I think a it was a months. demo, yeah, about yeah, 2,000 so, miles it's done. So it's done about 2,000 miles, so it's, maybe it's looking a little bit rough around the edges, whereas the Kawasaki is brand new. But I think there's just some tiny little shiny tweaks on it that just give it that edge in, the, in yeah. terms of styling. It looks... It looks a bit more expensive, doesn't it? Yes, definitely. And there's some nice finishes on it. Yeah. But overall, the styling's quite... So do you, like, you don't like those brace bars on the mudguards, do you? No, the, no, right? I don't. I like... Uh, I kind of like the... I know they're plastic on the M field. Yeah, the plastic mudguards there, but you've got... And, the and they're full metal chromed, chromed yeah. and everything, but I, I just think that is a little bit too old-fashioned looking. I like the gaiters. Yeah, yeah, gaiters it's, are good. It's hard. I really like the switch gear on that bike. It looks yes. proper. This looks a bit eBay. And even just the feel of the switch gear, you, yeah. you get a nice quality feel with the Kawasaki. Yeah. Some of the controls are just a little bit loose on the Enfield. Mm. Not bad, you yeah. know, none, none of it's bad so far, but it just feels that little bit more fragile. Yeah, well, I don't know about fragile. I know what you mean. It just feels a bit cheap. Yeah. You've got, um, talking around that kind of area, you've got a uh, span adjustable brake and clutch lever on yeah. that. Yeah. It's one of those things that you go, oh, span adjustable, and you use it once, and then you never use it again, so... And I haven't wished I could adjust the span on this, did you? No, I didn't. No, I have ridden bikes that have got a really big big reach to the butt, to the levers, but not that. And if it really bothers you that much, then, you know, I'm sure there's span adjustable parts in the parts catalogue, or there's, there's plenty of aftermarket parts for that. I haven't actually seen that much about it. I mean, it's not like some manufacturers that like to talk about how authentic they are. But these are, they're based on stuff, aren't they? So the, the W800 is based on the original W1. It was released in the US in 1966 with a 624cc motor. Now, according to the adverts that they put out at the time, that made 50 brake horsepower at 6,500 RPM and 40.5 pound foot at 5,500 RPM. Yeah. Now, Chad's ridden that because he was on the launch of W800, wasn't he? And he rode the original W1 and he said it did feel like it kind of made, because I thought, mm, you really? But, you know, a 650 making more then than a... 800 yeah. now and that's that's quite surprising because i kind of came into this thinking oh kawasaki it's just a it's a new bike dressed up to look old yeah. and i think we kind of forget that these japanese manufacturers have got a good 60 years of heritage behind them now yeah. you know we we think of british singles and twins as being the the core bike in the 60s yeah. and i think the japanese bikes were just just coming into the fray then but yeah, uh, yeah i think i think you know a lot of these manufacturers have got uh, some heritage to be proud of now. It's not that, you know, they're not pretending to have a heritage. It, yeah. it really is there. Yeah. So the Interceptor was actually a reaction to the Japanese bikes coming in. It was actually released in 1960, um, to kind of fend off this stuff coming in from Japan. And that was 10 years before 
UK side of Royal Enfield shut down. Right. And then all production moved to India, which kind of where it's been since under Ever since. Yeah. different owners. But I mean, it, Royal Enfield's been in India since 1955. Yeah, I mean, they've got a massive heritage mm. over there even. And, yeah. you know, I think we've all seen the, the, the TV shows where, where people travel around India. You know, India and, and Royal Enfield really are ubiquitous. Yeah. You know, they, 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 uh, they've they got a massive production facility out there. Other styling stuff then. Um, both 18-inch rear wheels. We've got a 19-inch front wheel on that W800. Yeah, strange choice. I don't know, I, I always think of a bigger front wheel just livening up the handling a little bit. Uh, we talked about this when we were out, and I noticed it when we tipped into a roundabout. I thought that felt a little bit lighter. Yes. It's a styling thing, really, because there's the mm. cafe and the street. So there's the W800. Yep. The w it's not a base model. There's the W800, the, yep. the W800 cafe, and the W800 street. Yep. The other two have got 18-inch um, front and rear. Yep. They've got different bars, different paintwork. I'm not sure the, the, the bigger front wheel really adds that much. It's, it seems a strange choice. Neither of these bikes really are all about handling, are they? It, it's about the relaxed, cruisy ride. They can hustle through the corners, but it seems seems a bit pointless putting a bigger wheel on. So maybe it is just a styling exercise. None of these bikes has got much in the way of storage space. On the Interceptor, you can get like a disc lock in the side panel if you take the toolkit out. But I've been using this SW Motec Legend luggage today because uh, it's been great because we can carry all of our kit in here. We filmed all of this the outside stuff using the Insta 361 R sucker. I was able to put everything I needed in these bags and some sandwiches and some water. Yeah, and they both got centre stands. Both got centre stands, which is brilliant. Accessibility is a bit of an issue on the Kawasaki. I think we both found it a bit difficult yeah, getting that foot, get foot in, in. to, yeah, to push it down. Yeah, you can kind of get it down and then your foot's at a weird angle and you're trying to work it around yeah, the exhaust. It's just but I can't complain, both got centre stands. So it's top trumps time, Steve. Price. Who's gonna win? Oh. <laughs> Go on then, how much is your rent? We've kind of gone in a bit like <laughs> five, six, nine, nine. Yeah, but how much is your Enfield? Okay, so that Enfield, because it's chrome, is six three six one. Okay, it's six one nine nine plus the three hundred twenty seven pound ninety five worth of accessories on there. So that's worth right. £6,526.95, right. that bike. But normally, like if we were doing like a popular German bike that needs fully specking up before it's... Yeah. Then you'd be like, yes, but come on, that's what this bike's worth. Yeah. The accessories we're looking at are the screen, bar ends, um, sump guard, crash bars. If you took it all off, it wouldn't be any less of a bike. It wouldn't no. have changed our no. perception of this bike. And the Chrome actually... Yeah, I'm very lucky that uh, Royal Enfield's lent this to us. I'd actually preferred one of the painted ones. Yeah, I must admit, I was looking through the, the range before we came out, and there, there's one um, called the Baker Express, which is a white tank with a red stripe along the bottom. Is that the one you're saying Missenden Flyer's got? Yeah, yeah, yeah Andy's got that Missenden Flyer, and I think that there's some blacked out parts in the bodywork as well, and I yeah. think that really does look good. Yeah. Is that still on the 5499? Yes. I know the orange painted one, which I really like. I don't dislike this, I should say. No. Because... Um, this is the kind of bike you walk away from, and you just go, oh. And both of these, though, everybody waves at you, people you don't know. And when you park it in inappropriate, like I parked it in some, front of somebody's house thinking it was a pub because it had this lovely mosaic on it. <laughs> I was taking pictures, and the lady came around who obviously lived there, and she's like, oh, that's a lovely bike. It was only as I was leaving, I was like, oh, that's her house. Yeah. But p people love them. Yeah, yeah. People who aren't into bikes just think they're cool. But yeah, so I think it is fair to say this bike costs £5,699, yeah. but not in chrome. No. So how much is yours, Steve? A little bit more. Eight. Eight, four, nine, nine. Pretty much three grand. Three grand more. Now you worked some of this out, didn't you? What does that mean? I thought, I thought for the three grand difference, what could you do with that three grand? Now obviously you'd have a big smug smile on your face because <laughs> you'd have three grand sitting in the bank or in your back wallet. Yep. You could buy a Grom. I've found some uh, pre-registered zero mile Groms at local dealers at about 2999. So that'd be your three grand. But if you're getting into biking, then I thought you could buy the stuff that I'm wearing. You could buy these boots, these jeans, this jacket, crash helmet, gloves. Looking at the average annual premium for insurance for Royal Enfields, you could insure it for three years. You could <laughs> yes. road tax it for three years. Unfortunately, because it's more than 600cc, it fits into the £93 a year yeah. road tax. So you could road tax it for three years. And you could buy 
65 tanks of fuel. <laughs> oh, no way. So, you know, you, you're effectively into biking for three years, all in for the price of the W. Wow. So I don't think it really is a, a gap to be sniffed at or a price no. difference to be sniffed at, really. It, and it's hard with money because, you know, money means something to everybody, obviously, but it's not our place to say whether something is cheap or expensive. No, no, you no. Know, no. Six, six, five and a half grand. It's not, you know, it's, it's not money that you've got lying around. No, no, it's not, you know. But uh, it, what matters is which one people really want. Mm. Um, but we'll, I think we'll come back to price right at the end, won't we? Yes, yes. I think there's more to be said than, a, the, you know, we, I think we both came into this thinking, well, it's, it's no-brainer, you know, the, the, the price gets it. But yeah. I think it is deeper There's more than that. to it. Engine, top trumps. I've got 648cc. I've got 773cc. Oh, Steve wins. But I think we can talk about economy now. I know we've got tank size coming up. Yeah. But you made a very good point. Economy is down to the size of the pot that you're yeah. filling with fuel. Yeah. Uh, and we, neither <laughs> of these have got a fuel economy gauge. So we worked out properly. We brimmed them. Yep. Reset the trips. Yep. Brimmed them again. What have we got? Enfield. 61.3 to the gallon. And both of us rode these equal amounts. We yeah, swapped yeah. Half, yeah. You know, we, did the, we did a route, uh, the same test route we used, mm -hmm. which takes in bumpy roads, um, fast twisting, uh, tight twisting, yeah. motorway, everything. Yeah. And we weren't, hang, you know, we weren't no. dawdling, were we? We no. weren't, you can't go absolutely mad on these, but we certainly weren't dawdling. No. So 61.3 for the Enfield, 52.9 for the Kawasaki. Wow. So quite a s significant difference. Yeah. Well, um, we'll look at what that means with tank range later. Yep. But I think that skews our top trumps because I think I win. If economy is your main driver and bearing in mind the cheaper bike is also the most efficient, I yeah. think that's going to be that's going to be up, up yeah, the list. True. Yeah, that's Yeah. Isn't it? You know, that's going to top trump a bigger engine. <laughs> Although we've established there's quite a big size difference, in terms of power, yeah. both of them bang on 47 horsepower. Yes. Well, this is a top Which... trump, isn't it? Power and torque top trump. Yep. 47 brake horse. 47, 47 brake horse. horse. What about torque? I've got 46.4 foot-pounds. 38.4. The W800 makes its 47 brake horse about 6,000 RPM. The Enfield makes it 7,100. But peak torque on the W800 is at 4,800. Peak torque on this at 4,000. Eight pound foot down on torque, the Enfield, but it comes in 800 RPM earlier. And I did notice with that W800, it keeps going, but it does feel like you have to be revving it a bit more. Yeah. But equally, that does feel a slightly more potent engine. Just the tractability out of the corners. Mm. It just felt just that little bit stronger. Yeah. And, you know, I, I was thinking, you know, the difference in torque is not going to be noticeable on the road. But I think it, mm. it just does. You'd have to be, you'd have to do as, exactly as we have, ride them back to back. Yeah. Uh, you know, keep swapping between the two, ride exactly the same road on the two bikes to really notice it. And then it's still not massive because we're, no. when we did the first session, mm -hmm. uh, I was on the Enfield and you were on yeah. W800. Yeah. And when we got on that bit that is your ride home, yeah. <laughs> you were gone. <laughs> and I was like, bloody hell, that W800's got miles more go in it. And then we did it again when we swapped round. I was like, oh, no, it's just Steve much quicker than me down yeah. there. So it, I don't think there's a... It is, you said it's, it's whoever gets on the gas first. Yeah. Shows it more. Yeah. There's yeah. not a significant difference. It's not... No. Yeah, we're not talking big differences that you're like, whoa, this thing's much no. more powerful. And you summed it up, I think. There was a bit where you, you could keep up but you, there was no way you were coming past. Yeah, yes. And that was where... Yeah, I was know. trying to catch you to say, no, we put these to pull in here to get a shot. Yeah. <laughs> They're both... Well, that one's purely air-cooled, yep. which is lovely. Yep. Uh, this one's air and oil-cooled. It's air just and a little oil radiator. Yep. The oil radiator doesn't offend me. Um, they're both... No, it doesn't feel any different. But there's a big but, I think, with this, because when I first rode this, and I think when you... I, I, you said, what's it like? I went... I want you to tell me what you think. <laughs> we, when we started this test, I think it's fair to say we both thought this was going to be like a... No-brainer. No-brainer. It's that all the time. Yeah, because yeah. that engine, between 3,500 and just under 4,500, yeah. it 
really vibrates, doesn't it? I'm trying to find a polite way of putting it and I'm struggling, so I'm just going to stay yeah. a little bit quiet on this one. Yeah, it's, it's got, I mean, I ride a Ducati V-Twin, so I'm used to lumpy engines. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's a weird combination of a, a really harsh vibration combined with quite it's, it's a revy engine yeah give it that you know you, you can take it right through the rev range it's it's a happy revy engine but it's just got that harshness to it that yeah just at certain revs at certain speeds it just ruins the ride yeah i found it quite intrusive but it, it got by the end of it it wasn't upsetting me as much no i think because you're sport by this cause it's such a beautifully smooth that engine super smooth yeah so that engine's really good i love the look of it and everything but there's just that point between three and a half and four and a half and you said maybe a lot of the people riding that would be expecting that feel and that character yes and i don't think i'd say to anybody no i'd say ride it and right the, the thing for me is it's between 60 and 70 mile an hour in mm. the top is when it's got that intrusive vibration that i find unpleasant and i think you do as well yeah, yeah 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 but other people might go oh no it's lovely it's a lovely character yeah, if you came off a, an original 60s bonneville or a, you know some early even as a single, yeah. it probably feels smooth as silk. Yeah. Um, you know, it is so so subjective, and we are comparing just these two. Yes. Yeah. And it almost got to the point where where I'd ridden the I'd ridden the W800 most of the morning, got on the Enfield, and that engine just felt a little bit as if it could do with a little bit more character. You know, it almost needs need some open cans or maybe a an airbox mod just to get a little bit more. And I, I actually wouldn't agree with that. I, I really like the sound of it and I love that. But then I'm getting, I think it's because I'm getting old. <laughs> Even though you're older than me. I like things to be as they are. Yeah. I haven't said that I'd want to modify this, but cosmetically, yeah. I quite like knowing the engine's been set up. I'm not going to mm -hmm. mess around with it. And I personally don't like loud exhaust anymore. No, I'm not saying go full on loud. Yeah. You know, not race exhaust or anything yeah. but i just think maybe it's just something, a little, just something a little bit fruitier because yeah. um, i think the exhaust note on this is is really nice they're both good though they both sound really good yeah I think. got that real authentic authentic twin sound say as well by the way that they're both a2 compliant yep so especially as a way to get into biking but when you think about that price of that and uh, i think that that reflects in the 800 really you know to have an 800 twin and only put out only put out 47 horsepower kawasaki have clearly targeted yeah. this towards the a2 market and i think that reflects in as much as the engine does feel stronger than the 47 horsepower would it's almost like they've tuned it down a little bit people should never be put off by like an always an a2 bike doesn't mean somebody's got an a you know full license shouldn't ride it because I, well, we had, I think it was a brilliant ride. So yeah. times when we were, most of the time when we were filming, um, we were keeping it steady because we were trying to film really close mm. together because of really wide lenses. Um, but there were points where we were going for it. And it, yeah. there's something really good fun about, not racing, but you know, chasing your mate down on a bike that isn't going to get you into silly trouble. And that's the difference, isn't it? Yeah. You know, you can, be, you can be on it all the time, yeah. carry loads of corner speed, yeah. and then you look down and you're still doing legal speeds. Yeah. But it just feels really satisfying to think that, yeah, you're in control of yeah. it and you're really on it. Yeah. So wait. I've got 202 kilograms. You've oh, got... I beat that. 221 kilograms. Big, more weight doesn't win. Oh, doesn't it? No. Oh, all right. No. All right. You win that Especially one. not when you look at power to weight ratio, which you worked out. <laughs> and we've got a power to weight ratio of the Enfield, 0.232 brake horsepower per kilo. Yep. And you've got... 0.212 brake horsepower per kilo. 0.2 brake horsepower per kilo more on the Enfield. Yeah, all right. I'll give you that one. I do want to give a caveat, though, because that feels heavier than it that. It does. I'm not convinced by that weight figure. And the, and again, this is this is down to individuals. I mean, you're a bit taller. What are you five? Five ten. Five ten. I'm only five six. Right. The the Kawasaki is a little bit lower. The the weight is a little bit lower. I preferred this. Yeah. Even though it felt, even though on paper it's heavier. Yeah. I could maneuver this much easier than that, and I so can. this felt lighter to I me. I think that feels lighter. And it's a shame we haven't got any heavier duty mm. scales. It's something to have a look at at some point. Mm. That's supposed to be the wet weight, yeah. whether or not that's with a full tank or whatever, but yeah. I think I need to fill it up with fuel and have a look. Yeah, um, but we'll, we'll come back to that. It doesn't feel overly heavy. Both of them are so, man so yeah. 
agile and nimble. You know, just they're the kind of bikes you can just jump on. Yeah. And instantly you feel at home on them. They're not intimidating. They're not overly heavy. Yeah. They're just really nice. You can just nip through. So we've been using the SP Connect mounts on these two bikes. Here we've got the Moto Mount Pro and the Mirror Mount Pro. But there are dozens of different ones available, including the universal mount, car suction mount, bar clamp mount, and more. All you do is buy the case to suit your phone, or you can stick the SP Connect adapter plate onto the back of pretty much any phone. Then you simply twist to lock, securely in place, horizontally or vertically. SP Connect has sponsored this video, but only after we'd reviewed the kit and found it to be worth recommending. You can check out our review in the description. Transmission. Six speed, chain drive. Ah, five speed, see that's better. No, no, that's not better, is it? No, yeah. But did you miss the sixth gear? No. Which really surprised me. Yeah, did I me. would have thought on the motorway, that would have been a problem. Uh, although having said that, because of that intrusive vibration for me, at 70, if you're mm. gonna sit at 70, mm. I would have liked an overdrive effectively. Yes, and that's, again, it's what the, it's the riding that you're gonna do. Mm. You know, if, you, if you're, um, you know, we're not quick, super quick riders. You, you don't want to be We'd on like these. to make progress on these, but if you're really just going to be pootling along at lower speeds, I mean, the first evening you dropped this off, I went in, off into town. Um, I did quite a little bit of town riding, and even then, though, the engine just felt it just felt wrong. It felt like the gearing was just a little bit out slightly. Really? I didn't notice it so much today. On which one, sorry? On the W. Right. Yeah, yeah. it just felt like that comfortable position at 30 yeah it just felt like you were either if you if you went up a gear the fueling wasn't quite crisp enough because you were only pulling 1500 revs or so right. if you came down a gear it just I revved up a little bit higher yeah. and it was just a little bit intrusive yeah it just didn't have that nice gearing at 30 whereas the enfield was more than happy i think the thing you don't even think about it on this one do you no I, the, to be honest the main place i noticed that was when i changed down into a roundabout yeah. Oh, oh yeah, no, that's you first, end up in not first. second. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So following you on the A1, I was I was going, oh, I can't quite keep up. And then I suddenly thought, oh, sixth gear. Yeah, and yeah, then I've all of a sudden. <laughs> yeah. Got more. Yeah. Uh, so I win. Tank size. Go on then. 13.7 litres. <laughs> 15 litres. Oh. I can go further. Oh. I've got more fuel. Can you though? Well, let's, let's look at that economy. <laughs> <laughs> so your economy was 61.3. Working doing the maths, I'll tell you, you can go 184.7 miles. I've got 15 litres, but worse economy, so I can go 174. 10, I win. So you go 10 miles further. I've got a 10 mile walk. To catch you up at the end, and we of the are day. talking about running brim to yeah, completely. Yeah, it's dry. all hypothetical. Yeah, but it's it's quite a significant difference, ten miles when you think about it. It's the difference between making it to the petrol station and not, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's true. Um, and I've got no fuel gauge, so all I can do is rely on a fuel light that I think came on at about 120, 125, 125, 125 miles. The yeah. fuel light came on. Um, the fuel gauge on yours, which you've got which i haven't yep. uh the final block started flashing at about the same 120 something miles yeah. so there's quite a significant reserve if you want to call it that before before yeah. they'll run out and you wonder whether you can trust that but i think you probably can because this is for a global market mm. so you've potentially got about 60 miles left in reserve on this yeah but in are we saying in america people have been saying yeah we've had comments on some of the some of the um posts from from our uh viewers in America saying that uh, they can go 40, 50 miles between petrol stations. Yeah, so. so that's quite, you know, I think we, we're kind of spoiled that we, we've we got petrol stations almost on every corner, yeah. so you never really do run out of fuel. No. Suspension then. 41 millimeter forks, twin shock on the rear, adjustable for preload only on the rear. Yeah, I've got 41 millimeter forks right way up or upside down. See, they always used to be upside down in the my old dad days. My says that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm showing my age now. Um, yeah, twin shop, rear, adjustable for preload only. 
So on paper, exactly the same suspension. But I think that feels cheaper. Yeah, yeah. I do. I do. Yeah, in practice. There were, there were certain times when this felt a little bit crashy, whereas the Enfield didn't at low speed. But then when, you, when you're picking the pace up a little bit, this just felt a little bit more stable. Certainly mm. when we were doing some motorway work, the Enfield just felt a little bit... It just felt like it was going to get more um, more influenced by the wind. That one feels crashy sometimes over poles. Yeah. We do make a point of riding through yeah, poles yeah. and stuff to find out what it feels like. That can feel a bit harsh, but it does feel like it's in a little bit more control. And when you start really pushing on at high speed on the motorway or when you're pushing on in corners, this feels a little bit looser. Yes. Not yeah, dangerously so. It doesn't no, no, feel no, no. bad. No. Uh, and you kind of got to argue that's not what these bikes are for, no, pushing on, you no. know. Yeah, that, I think you can feel that you're spending more money on the suspension there. I've got a set of Hagon shocks to put on the rear of this. I haven't done them yet because I wanted to get this right. test done first. And how much is a set of shocks? Uh, a couple of hundred quid, something yeah. like that. Yeah, so it's not, yeah. you know, you're not breaking the bank, are you? No, getting, but I do think a bit more money gone into that suspension. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. yeah, yeah, you can feel the difference. <laughs> Rider Aids. Rider Aids. I've got ABS. I've got ABS and a slipper clutch. Ooh. For when you're really barreling into corners and you really need to bang it down the box. But to be fair, it's slip assist, which should mean. Yes, yeah. Should mean there's a lighter clutch. Is it? Is your hand but calibrated? My hand is fully calibrated. There is no way. <laughs> you have a feel of that. You feel those. I'll take your word for it. There is. That clutch definitely feels heavier. Yeah. Which it makes you think, what would that be like without a slip assist clutch? Yeah. Slip assist clutches, you know, all they're doing is a, it's a different design to a clutch basket, uh, which normally allows you to have lighter springs. I didn't get to the stage where the rear wheel was going to lock up on downshifts at all. If the clutch is felt the other way around, I'd be like, well, that's good. I've got two trips. I don't know if that's a rider aid. You've only yeah, got one. I've only got one. And a fuel gauge, obviously. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, the clock's wrong on mine. I don't know whether that didn't aid me much. I think it's because this bike's been in lockdown. <laughs> yeah. so the clock's changed. <laughs> Brakes. Yep. 320 minute disc, twin pot calipers. On, up front we're talking about here. Yep. Exactly the same. 320 mil disc, twin pot calipers. They both work. Yeah. You've got Takikos on there. And we've got Bybury's on this, which is by Brembo. Yeah. It's the, the budget armour Brembo. I think the the feel on the Enfield was just a little bit softer. Having ridden the, the W for a little while, mm. I then went into the first corner on the Enfield and, and it was just like, oh, just had to give it a little bit more. Don't forget that's firmer suspension though as well. No, I should say the ABS works. I noticed a couple of times I managed to get the front to lock on that. But it right. was locking, so it wasn't an over... You could hear go... <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Uh, but we were barreling in downhill. It's, yeah. They're not, they're not nasty ABSs. No, no. Of them. They both work good. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. We should point out, I think it's fair to say, that uh, there's been a recall on the brakes on this Royal Enfield, mm -hmm. um, and it's for corrosion inside the caliper. Right. I would imagine it's getting behind the seals because it's stopping the pistons returning properly. Apparently they've mm -hmm. only had four cases of it. They've done a recall. Wow. Every, every bikes are going to go back to be inspected and checked. And, yeah. for, and later in the year, when they've got them, they're going to replace all the calipers. Wow, fantastic. So, you know, I, I, it, recalls I don't think are a problem as long as they're no. dealt with properly. No, it's good that uh, they're standing up for their responsibilities, though, and yeah. issuing that recall early. Yeah. You know, four instances is not, not big, is it? And no. yet they've taken the, the right decision. Seat. Well, mine's better because uh, mine's lower, 790 mil. Mine's 804 mil. Well, that's better for me because I'm shorter, so yeah. a better lower seat is better for me. That bike actually feels more compact overall, though, as well, doesn't it? Does, it does, yeah. It's a much smaller bike. And I find the pegs are quite high. I actually, towards the end of the ride, I was finding I could get my weight and lift my bum off so I could move around a bit mm. more easily on that. But I personally, I find that a little tiny bit squashed. Yeah. I love it. I, yeah. I think, and this is this is really where. How tall are you again? Five foot six. I'm five foot ten. Yeah, I found the Enfield. It was just that combination of slightly higher seat. It's not a great deal, is it? Mm. You know. No. Um, and and but that slightly higher seat just made mil. it feel a little bit 
more top heavy. Okay. This is really compact. It's really low. It carries its weight low. Yeah. And I, ju I just really enjoyed it. I think so. this bike feels top heavy anyway. When you're moving it around the garage, it feels a bit top heavy. Yeah. With seat heights, you do have to think about the standover height. So you yeah. could have a tall seat, but very narrow. That might mean you'd be able to get down. But I think both of them are about the same, really. Yeah. I can't f quite fat, flat foot on the Enfield, but I certainly can on the Kawasaki. You can't flat foot on that? No. Really? Yeah. But you never felt intimidated by it? No, 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 cool. no. None of them feel tall, you know. And it comes back to this accessibility Mm. accessibility part for them both yeah you know you can really feel instantly at home on both of them neither of them stands out as being uncomfy or comfy uh, no <laughs> no it's really just down to the individual that's going to ride it yeah warranty then what have we got two years Three years yeah. and roadside assist. Yeah. Interceptor right. wins. Yeah, that is good. The, yeah, that's really impressive. It's been surprising if we put something out on social today, didn't we, saying, which would you choose? Just yeah. with no, nothing else, just saying, here's a picture of two bikes, which mm. would you choose? And overwhelmingly, people were saying the Enfield. Yeah. And I think you'd accept, not rightly so at all, but you would expect there to have been some kind of stigma about the Royal Enfield, or it's a cheap bike. Yeah, so. I think they've, they've done really well this year in, in overcoming that, or last two years really, in overcoming that um, that sentiment that they're cheap, nasty, mm. foreign made. And I think, you know, all credit to them, they've, they've, they've done a great job. You know, they've released two fantastic looking bikes. Um, the engines, you know, it comes back to the engine really, fantastic engine at, at a great price point. You can, you can see how they've done it in some of it, haven't you? There's things like, you yes. know, it's the, it looks very industrial, the, um, yeah, some of the levers and yeah. I mean the brake lever the gear, on this is just, brake lever, just enormous anyway. That but one looks huge, but at least it's nicely chrome, whereas this brake lever is a bit Yeah, industrial. it just looks like it's been laser cut. Yeah, yeah. Some of the finish on the engine casing in the middle and the, the black plastic of the airbox, it's a bit utilitarian. But I honestly think that's part of its charm. Yeah. I don't think we are qualified to say you should buy this because no. I, I, that's the great thing about motorbikes you can only ever say based on what I like so yeah, yeah. I own an S1000XR a yeah. customised Grom and a 1999 ZX6R yeah. you've got I've got Ducati Scrambler I've got a little SR125 that doesn't really count still um, in bits it's, it's still in bits yeah it has been for a long time now when we started this this morning we both said no argument the Interceptor yeah but after a day with the W800, it's not as clear cut. If you ignore the money, which would yeah. you buy? I think it would still be the Interceptor. Okay. Just because of the engine. I love everything about the Kawasaki. Everything yeah. else apart from the engine on the Kawasaki. Yeah. It's just that vibration. It's such a such a fine divider between the two. Yeah. But I think the the engine in the in the Interceptor is is just that bit sweeter. There's a few little parts about the Interceptor that I just really like. The colour schemes available mm. although it's it's more authentically retro i think they've just put a few little modern twists into it with the color schemes and with the styling that just give yeah. you that little bit of more of excitement for me i just find that a bit intrusive that vibration yes. but uh, somebody yes. else riding it might love it yeah but when you put price back into it i really really love this i think there's a few few drawbacks with the interceptor that the 3,000 that you've got in your pocket would yeah. help you solve. If you could fix the oh, engine yeah. vibration by changing engine mounts and maybe changing the exhaust, yeah. but you still, you've mm. already spent that extra to yeah. have to spend that extra to solve what could be a bit of a, a drawback. I think for some people they wouldn't, they'd love that. Yeah. That feel, yeah. um, that character. Yeah. It's not a bad bike. You are yeah. not going to be disappointed if, if you buy that bike. And I think a lot of people will, will pay the extra because it is a treat you know bikes mm. are bikes yeah. for a lot of us bikes are a luxury item you know you really could just got to ride them both and, and make your own mind up we've shown from the top trumps that the higher figure quite often will win yeah. so i think some people will will enjoy spending yeah. that little bit extra treat themselves to something a little bit extra yeah i think you'd be happy if you had either bike but your mate who's got this is going to be pretty smug he is <laughs> So a big thanks to SP Connect for funding the production of this video. And make sure you hit the subscribe button to catch all the videos we've got coming up. We've got the most honest bike reviews, most honest kit reviews. We've got lots of advice. 
uh, on riding, kit, everything you need to know, exclusive interviews. Make sure you come back soon and we'll see you again. You're gonna to have to hold on to something because your excitement is just gonna be through the roof. 48 cream eggs, <laughs> 12 quid.